Hello, it's Daryl at 10 Foot Truck Good Attitude Services. And it's really cold out. Um, we did have a snowstorm. It didn't turn out as bad as I thought. Um, and I had a job that I was going to take, but it, was, it looked like the snowstorm was going to be, you know, really bad. It turned out to be not so bad, so I guess I could have probably done the job. I, I don't know. I didn't, I, wasn't in that, I didn't go out to that area, but where I'm at, it didn't snow that as, as bad. It's just really cold and it's gonna be dropping down in the negatives coming up. And um, I do have a job, I have a couple of repeats. I've been putting up ads, I haven't get, it, the business has been slowing down a bit, uh, but I am getting some repeat customers coming in uh, and towards the end of the week. Uh, I have an expediting gig that I've been doing for this company. Um, and they're really good, they pay well. And it's really close to where I'm at, where I pick up, do the pickups are right down the street for me. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And that shouldn't be snowing, so I should be able to do that. That's two. I think I'm going to be doing three. Uh, he's going to be emailing me, but I think I'm doing three pallets. And one of the pallets, he has to have it custom and cut because it's not going to quite fit. And then the other, I think I'm going to do, might have to do two loads because I can put two, two full-size pallets in here, but he was saying that at the other end where I unloaded, uh, they didn't have a way of pulling, uh, so the pallets are extremely heavy, you know, thousands of pounds on them with all the material. You have to have a way to hook the pallet to the forklift and, and pull it out if you, on the second pallet if the forks don't go that far. So I, uh, apparently they don't have that. So that'll be a trick, a tricky man maneuver. I don't know if we have to hand unload it, which I'll have to charge more or they're going to have to you know, figure a way to, to get that pallet out. So we'll see. I'll let you know on that. That's coming up this week, hopefully. And then I have a uh, repeat customer for a moving job, and um, and I was like, oh, I don't know, because it's going to be it's going to be Sunday, and it's going to be down like 16 degrees. So I don't really want to be working hard labor in that kind of weather and that cold. But when I talked to him, he said that he's actually going to be hiring movers because it's going to be a full 26 foot truck. He's going to be hiring uh, movers to do the heavy stuff because I load, I moved his stuff into his house. I've done two moves for him, for him, so I know the stuff he has is extremely heavy. So when he said that, I said, yeah, when he said he's gonna hire movers, I go, that's a great idea. Get all the heavy stuff in there with, with the movers. And then he said he wants to pull all the rest of the stuff out of his shop, which is just small things and organize the truck to get it ready for him to drive cross country. So, um, so I'm willing to do that. because It's gonna be extremely cold. I don't wanna be out doing too much hard labor in that kind of cold, but it's just gonna be organizing the truck and stuff like that uh getting it all tied down and ready for transport i'm good with that so we'll see about that that should be this week too but of ads uh this week i it was so slow that i just started doing uh, the gig apps i did instacart i did some shopping and i uh, did some doordash and uber eats and right and i well no yeah i think uber, did I do uber eats doordash you know, so i was doing those on the off time but um i started i hadn't done shopping for the shop apps because I have shipped and Instacart. They're both shopping apps. I hadn't done those in a year. Uh, I haven't been a, it's been a year since I've done shopping for those apps. So it was pretty, it was harder work than I thought. I mean, I was actually sore the next day from, and that was just one shop I did on that. And I was like, it was a lot of walking on the shopping orders. You got to walk the whole store, especially if it's a full shop. So, I mean, I was like, wow, this is just, I was just sore from like a moving job. <laughs> so it was just shopping groceries. But anyway, I had this idea um, for shopping. Um, since I've done, I did, uh, uh, what do you call, I guess you call it a, a personal shopper when you're shopping groceries for a customer. I've done that a long, I did that for a job like all the way back in around 1993, 94. I had a job for a company called Peapod and they, they, they contracted with Safeway to do their deliveries. And so I would sh also did the shopping and this is before the internet. So they had what it was called the intranet, which is just a network that you could, you could uh, log in with a modem back in the day when they used to have, you know, those modems and you would dial up modem. So the customer would dial up modem into the, into the network, our network or the Peapod network. And they would order the groceries and then we would get a, uh, a dot matrix printout. We would shop the order at Safeway. And then we had a trailer outside. The company had a trailer hooked next to the store for like sort of refrigerated, refrigerated items. They had like freezers and stuff, and they had all uh, all the bins and stuff. So 
then when we do deliveries, we would just have the bins all set up for our deliveries and we would do a route. So I've done, I've done, I did that for a while. So I know how to do shopping, I mean, professional shopping and grocery delivery. So I thought, let me look at this other app. It's called Dumpling. I don't know enough about it yet, but, uh, you know, looking into see how that uh, may be, you know, uh, something to do too, because that's actually your own business. It's actually, it would be your own business. You're just renting, you're paying a subscription for the software. And um, from what I understand, I don't know, I don't know all about, I totally know the full, how it fully works, but I know that from what I can see, you, uh, you're you basically paying a subscription for the website and the software and the payment method. Because when you go to these shops, like for Instacart and that, you have a card that it has, it's gonna have enough money to pay for uh, the whole, whatever groceries they have. And so you don't have to worry about that. You just use the card and you deliver the groceries. But uh, if you're doing it through this app, I've seen Dumpling, which actually it's your own business. You're not, you're, you're like, uh, actually I wouldn't go out and advertise and get your own clients from what I understand. One thing I like about it though, is that you can, if you do a really good job and you do really good at customer service and then you, and they're happy with your, your service, uh, they'll, you'll get repeat customers. So, which like in my moving and my junk removal and delivery uh, service, I get tons of repeat customers and that's how you really what you want. That's really the goal of your, of any business is to get uh, repeat customers in my mind. That's the way I look at it. So when you're doing those apps like Instacart and all that, um, you maybe get customers, you know, same customers sometimes, but it's just, it's different. You're not getting, you know, the same, you're not getting a repeat customer where they're gonna use your services on a regular basis for the most part. Or I've seen this app, Dumpling, is giving you opportunities to do that and you're just using their software website and, uh, and so, that it's, so you're able to do that service. Because if you had to build your own website and, and use your own payment, payment methods, it's gonna be very expensive. So I can see that as, as a good way to see how that works. And since I've done that, maybe that'll be another service. I don't know yet, I haven't really made a decision on that, but that may be an additional services for good attitude services, because you can build a pretty good size uh, side business with something like that, um, I think. Uh, because I know I worked for that company and, uh, way back in the early 90s, Peapod did that service, and I looked them up and they're still around. So that's longevity so I figured that's a good service and I remember the customers that we would deliver to were people who really didn't have the ability to to go to the store so they needed that service so it is a needed service so um, I think it'll be around for a long so I might dabble in that and see how it works maybe uh, add that to my good attitude services with my junk hauling moving delivery assembly expediting and then maybe grocery delivery. We'll see. It's just something I was thinking about since I've been since I was doing that. And I hadn't done it. And I hadn't really thought about it in a long time. But for sure, I'm keeping with the junk removal. For sure, I'm keeping with the moving, and for sure uh, with the expediting. And um, and I'm hoping to, to keep working with those guys out there that I'm doing the pallet uh, material loads because their truck. Uh, they maybe they're not going to fix their truck, and then maybe they're just going to use my services. It may be more of a better deal. So I'll have consistent work with them too on the side. So I'm just building all these different incomes. So when there's slow times, you can pivot to the, like now it's kind of slow for, I haven't had a lot of junk removal, but I'm pivoting to the moving and to the expediting. And then I'm also doing the, the gig apps, which is another avenue of income. I'm trying to keep that flow, steady flow. Until one, if you get your company to where you're really doing, getting all those repeat customers safer, like it's for junk removal, and you don't maybe you don't need it need these side incomes. You just you got you got enough coming in all the time. That can happen over the years. But for me right now, I have to pivot a lot. I have to bounce back and forth these different services until I find out which ones are gonna you know gonna completely start to follow that wave and and uh, focus more on those. So I've been watching a lot. Of, <coughs> sorry, I've been watching a lot of YouTube um, videos on junk removal. Um, and some of these guys are doing really well and getting some ideas on that. Um, I wrote some stuff down here. I'm gonna do another video here, uh, late, just in a minute here. This this video is just about me and my services, but I was gonna, I found an article uh, about the gig uh, economy and independent contracting 
that it was interesting to me uh, because it has to do with new uh, regulations, I think. So uh, I wanted to look into that and kind of read it and figure out what that means because that may affect people that are independent contractors and people who subcontract. And, you know, we got to know these things, how they work. Because I've been looking into subcontracting. In fact, I just met some guys. Like some guys called me. To, they wanted to get hired by my company, but I, I, I'm not hiring anybody. But I kept their number, and the guy that I'm doing the move for, he needed to hire a mover. So I said, well, I don't know these guys, but you can give them a shot, give them a call, see what, they, what they're like. So those guys work out because the guy I'm moving, he's a contractor himself, and he works on you know, you know, big jobs, and he works with a lot of people, so he knows how to judge people's uh, you know character and, how, and if they're a good worker. So, uh, well, it'll be a test run. We'll see how they do. If they do really well, I might be interested in you know maybe some contracting with them or something. We'll, we'll see in the future because I don't really know a lot of people out here like I used to know in my other area. But. So things are moving ahead. 2024. It's a little bit slow, but it's it's doing okay. Hope all you guys out there uh, are doing great and getting a good start in this, uh, this new year. It's really, really cold out here, so I think I'm going to go back inside. I was just checking with the truck. I do have a leak I have to deal with in the truck down there. It snowed really heavy and, and rain and kind of leaked in here. I've had a leak here for a while. I just have to, off and on, I have to reseal it. It's an old truck. You need to seal these things up every once in a while. All right, well, uh, have a great day, a great week, and a good weekend coming up. This is Good Attitude Services, 10-foot truck, signing out.